All right, we're going to do a short little one here on uh, basing and mounting your figure to the base. Um, not so much actually building the base, but um, actually getting it prepped, uh, finishing it off, and getting your model onto it. Here we're using corkboard, and this m video more applies to when we're mounting a figure to a base that's not just the plastic base itself, and you're putting something on top of it, whether it's corkboard or what have you. Um, going to come in, we're going to primer it, primer it black, and make sure you get it really saturated. Uh, before this, when I actually built the base, of course, I made sure that it fit the model I was, uh, I'm going to base it to. And I, you saw there at the very beginning, I was just quickly uh, sizing it up and um, making sure that it still fit before I move on to the painting. Uh, once it starts to dry, or it is dry, you're going to come in with a little bit of glue. And I'm going to put it here in between this, uh, this two pieces of corkboard and this little chasm I've created. So I want some grit on it or some ballast. I've really found that when you do an array of different, as long as it's in the same theme, um, different textures on a base, it, they tend to turn out a little better. So it's a mix of sand and ballast. I'm just going to put it on there. And uh, then we're going to come in and we're going to paint the ballast uh, by airbrushing with some burnt umber and then a highlight. Again, you should always make sure that your base is in a theme. So if you have a evil army, usually it's going to be some sort of uh, some black and some burnt grass, and your good guy armies are a little more bright than that. But it's all up to you. Um, and before we're going to see here in a moment, I'm going to bring uh, two other figures out here. I'm just going to make sure before I finish up the paint job that they're kind of in the same theme, that I don't do something that's out of character so I have this one odd base in there that makes even a good model look a little little out of place. So anyway, what we're going to do now is once I size up with the, with the other two, so we're going to do dry brushing. Now, here I'm going to use P3, and it's a good idea uh, to use even a drier um, paint um, if you want, but because this is not like a very precise type of dry brush, P3 will will work fine. In general, you don't want to use P3 for dry brushing because it's at a very more wet type of paint and it doesn't do a good job of dry brushing. So I do a dark gray and then a 50-50 mix of gray and white and then almost pure white and I just get the edges. Make sure you get the side of the cork board to give the illusion of granite on the side. Pretty easy, pretty basic stuff. Uh, again, if we want to go over a little more, uh, drop a note below and we can do you know, specifically how this was done a little closer up. Um, so you can see here I'm bringing out the other ones that I already have done here just to make sure the bases uh, match even though it's a long way away. They do, trust me on this one. Um, and then uh, we're going to do some static grass on here. So the way I do static grass, I use normal PVA glue or Elmer's white glue. And I take a uh, plastic uh, brush, you can get $2 in any hobby store, and I dip it in the glue, and I kind of dab it where I want the uh, static grass to go. Uh, it kind of gives you a little bit of a point instead of smearing the glue all over the place. Personally, I like to show uh, uh, grass kind of where two levels of um, the slate or the granite meet, basically, with the cork boards. I find it gives a nice effect. It kind of breaks up the, the outline a little bit. When you put the static grass on, make sure you do press it down into the glue. If you don't do that, it's, you're not going to get a good tuft. Um, and that's really kind of it for kind of finishing off the base or making a base. Again, I can go into a little more detail if we need to, but uh, there it is ever so quickly. But don't worry, at the end, I'll, uh, I'll show you what it looks like up close. Again, just dry fit the model and make sure I know what I'm going to do. So when you're actually mounting the model to the base, which is what this is really about, you need a few things. You need a paper clip, of course, your model on your base, dikes, pin vise, your super glue, and white or any light colored ink. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill into wherever the mounting point is. In this case, it's going to be the hooves, two in this case, the two front ones. We're going to drill with the pin vise, uh, and then we're going to use a paper clip to actually create an anchor. Make sure again when you drill in, you go at the same angle. In fact, if you can, you want your holes to be perpendicular so that the paper clips that stick out are perpendicular. The reason is, if they're not perpendicular, when you try to press them through, 
uh, the base itself, they're going to go in at different angles, which means the holes that you drill have to complement those angles. It's kind of difficult to eyeball not a 90 degree or perpendicular hole when you're drilling out the base. So uh, best to try and get this right the first time. And uh, as always, be careful when you're, when you're drilling through that you don't go through the model. So clip off your pieces of paper clip and you're just going to fit them in to make sure they're not too long or too short. You want to make sure they're long enough to actually fit through the base, but make sure that your holes are roughly perpendicular and then glue them in. You'll see here in a sec, I'll just size it up. I've done this enough times that I know how long it is long enough to actually go all the way through. But now the secret to making sure they fit well is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, take these, I'm going to make sure they're the same length. There we go, the same length, and then I'm going to dab a little bit of white glue on the tip of each one and then place it on the model where I want, which is going to leave two little white dots. That's my target right there for uh, drilling them out. Now don't worry, um, the hoof or the foot or whatever is going to cover that little bit of white that's on there, so you don't need to worry about it too much. Um, another trick to, to do is once you drill these out with this uh, hole and the pin vise is almost the same size as a paper clip, I come in with a 1 16th drill bit from the base side and clear out some of that plastic and make sure that when you're actually pushing it through, it doesn't get hung up. And then you just mount it uh, and then you glue it on the top side if needs be. And then on the bottom side, if there's any resistance, if it's not sitting just right, what I do is I actually bend the anchor down so it creates kind of like a pulling effect. Uh, as I'm doing with this one, that's very quickly and hard to see, but you bend it down and crank it down so that it pulls the model down against the base. Uh, make sure you clip off the excess. You bend it down all the way so that there is uh, nothing in the way. And when you actually set the model down, it's laying flat on the base and not on the paper clip on the bottom. And that's basically it. That's all there is to it. Get you a little close up here. So subscribe. Let me know if this uh, helped out. If I could explain any more, I'll be happy to do it. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.